الصبر نور ويقين لله در الصابرين نعم الأخي ولا تهن أبدا وعزمك لا يلين الصبر نور ويقين لله در الصابرين نعم الأخي ولا تهن أبدا وعزمك لا يلين قدر من الله مضى فابسم إذا حل القضاء لن يضيق بك الفضاء فالله مولاك المعين قدر من الله مضى فابسم إذا حل القضاء لن يضيق بك الفضاء فالله مولاك المعين الصبر نور ويقين لله در الصابرين نعم الأخي ولا تهن أبدا وعزمك لا يلين الصبر نور ويقين لله در الصابرين نعم الأخي ولا تهن أبدا وعزمك لا يلين انظر بلاء الأنبياء يسمو بهم نحو العلا فبهم يكون الاقتداء نعم الهداة المهتدين انظر بلاء الأنبياء يسمو بهم نحو العلا فبهم يكون الاقتداء نعم الهداة المهتدين الصبر نور ويقين لله در الصابرين نعم الأخي ولا تهن أبدا وعزمك لا يلين الصبر نور ويقين لله در الصابرين نعم الأخي ولا تهن أبدا وعزمك لا يلين الله يعلم ما يكون والأمر في كاف ونون فلا تهب ريب المنون واذكر يوافى الصابرون الله يعلم ما يكون والأمر في كاف ونون فلا تهب ريب المنون واذكر يوافى الصابرون الصبر نور ويقين لله در الصابرين نعم الأخي ولا تهن أبدا وعزمك لا يلين الصبر نور ويقين لله در الصابرين نعم الأخي ولا تهن أبدا وعزمك لا يلين أبدا وعزمك لا يلين أبدا وعزمك لا يلين In 2001, the United States invaded Afghanistan. A brutal war ensued in which the lives of over 45,000 civilians were lost. But this year, the Taliban took control of the country, establishing the Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan. Now that the war is over, its leadership faces new challenges. The question on everyone's mind is what's next. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Salatu wa Salamu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Uh, dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Uh, as always, we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his victory. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for tawfiq. And we bear witness that there is no God but Allah and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the last and the final messenger of Allah azza wa jal. Dear brothers and sisters, uh, we are seeing, especially in the subcontinent and especially in Central Asia, these two areas, um, and of course the rest of the Muslim world, but specifically in this area where we're seeing uh, Islamic resurgence, 
uh, meaning that uh, we, we in the last few weeks, if not few months, we have seen the rise of Taliban. Uh, we are seeing, uh, you know, we, we, we see the struggle of the Muslims in Sham. We see the struggle of the Muslims, um, you know, in, in all of North Africa and, you know, Kashmir and India. But Afghanistan plays a very specific and very special role uh, in what is taking place today in, in the world. Uh, so today we have a very special discussion and uh, also a very special uh, uh, guest. Uh, we have, inshallah, we will have uh, Dr. Abu Talha Al-Malkawi, uh, who is, uh, you know, he who is a professor, who is uh, a teacher, who is uh, a political analyst, who has, uh, who, who plays a very important role within the Islamic movements uh, and also uh, within the Muslim world. Then we also have... Uh, Brother Rahmatullah, who is a native of Afghanistan, who is playing a very pivotal role in, in rebuilding Afghanistan. And I think he's going to continue to play that role, uh, especially with what is taking place. And also, I mean, that is his home. And so this will this is what will make it, you know, the discussion even more unique. And inshallah, we will have uh, uh, Mufti Nadim, who we are waiting for still just a few minutes. Uh, because uh, he's also teaching, uh, he gets done with the teaching and he's on, and who who's also from Dioband, um, uh, in many ways speaks the language of the area uh, from the, being from the Diobandi school. Uh, so, and we will get, so we, this is a very good mix. We have somebody who is in and out of, the, of, of, of Afghanistan. Um, we have people who understand the situation politically. We have people who are, who, uh, understand the situation from uh, more of a, you know, Islamic ideological background. And we want to really have this conversation in a sense that what is next for Afghanistan? Uh, as uh, another thing, as you see that, you know, every time the Taliban are trying to take any steps, they constantly seem to find either the IMF or the Americans or the World Bank, uh, different institutions of the world trying to maintain and contain uh, what could be uh, the, the rise of Islam from this area? So, inshallah, let's begin this discussion to see where, you know, what are the, the intellectuals of this ummah, uh, you know, what are they thinking? So, uh, welcome, uh, Abu Talha and Brother uh, Rahmatullah. How are you guys doing? Okay. Assalamu alaikum. We are, uh, uh, and thank you very much for this. Uh, uh, for this gathering, for this discussion, uh, which is uh, continues to be uh, an important, significant topic uh, today, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. And uh, Brother Rahmatullah, how are you doing? How are things? Assalamu <coughs> alaikum from my side as well. Uh, Jazakallah khair for organizing and also from Professor. Um, may Allah bless him for arranging his time to come and speak on this topic and give us enlightenment inshallah from intellectual perspective uh, he of course understand the islamic movements and what happened in the past he can share i'm sure we can learn a lot from the history and uh, implement it back in afghanistan inshallah inshallah so uh, brother rahmatullah while you're on uh, what is you know i know the economic situation is dire uh, i know uh, you know the especially hunger uh, seems to become the new crisis uh, over 1. Point some million uh, children, I've heard 1.3 million children uh, under five, uh, yeah. completely in a, in, in a life and death situation. Almost 22. Point some million people um, in in uh, you know dire hunger situation. So, what is the reality on the ground? I mean, what we are hearing, uh, you know, from the Western media is obviously it seems like you know it's always the same negative. Uh, but what is the real situation, and where are we going from here? Unfortunately, only on these matters, uh, they are reporting the true numbers. Uh, the numbers are true that 22 million people are uh, needs of humanitarian aid uh, from the international community and from the other um, community across Afghanistan, uh, outside Afghanistan. And the children, I have seen some of the footages from the hospital and their starvation. Uh, there were many reasons why this happened. Number one, Afghanistan economy was flooded with foreign ads. Um, there was no economy built, as we mentioned in our previous live session. 
uh, mashallah muftab is also here welcome inshallah so to and the reason the economy wasn't built within the country it was only the money which came in and it was spent and returned back to their own countries so when the international organizations they left uh, a lot of people were unemployed uh, they couldn't find work in fact can you imagine that when the the new regime took over even courier companies like DHL, they stopped working in Afghanistan. And they had 30 employees only in Kabul. Those people who are delivering papers and letters to people's houses, they took their families, more than 30, and brought them back to our city where I live in Germany. Uh, and they stopped the rest of operation in Afghanistan. So a lot of unemployment is happening from the organizations and uh, the funding that was happening to many micro businesses uh, people are unemployed and of course that caused lack of uh, food security and so on and so forth and also the neighboring countries which is like uzbekistan tajikistan uh, and same goes to pakistan i i don't think so they have come to a conclusion uh, they've also stopped the borders like um, they they can't really uh, import things from them and as, of course we will discuss in great details uh, the banking issue uh, as afghan even if we want to transfer funds to our family uh, we can do that, but not more than $250 or $200 uh, a month. So that's a very small amount to run a whole country because uh, re from the previous report in 2020, uh, more than $200 million are transferred to Afghanistan in terms of donations from fellow Afghans. So that's a huge number supporting, uh, you can imagine, more than uh, 5 million families and fam 5 million individuals because that was report based on the UN survey. And now even that has been stopped. So how, how are you imagining people are managing uh, themselves and their needs um, in terms of finances concern? So we, of course, we will discuss this in detail. But that the situation people are saying people are selling their babies, that's completely true. Uh, children are starving in hospital and hospitals are running out of, uh, you know, medical supplies. That's true. Oxygen. We recently supplied some oxygen to the hospitals. Uh, the hospital employees have not got this for more than five months, three months in the previous regime and about three months in this regime, or maybe two and a half months. So people are struggling. Um, one of the photos was sent to me from the Ministry of Justice. So can you imagine the office of ministry, they are eating bread and just boil um, potatoes. So just, <laughs> just boil potatoes with the bread. So that's the situation on the ground, unfortunately. And hopefully it will improve. Of course, I would like to hear from others, and we will discuss great detail the economic situation, inshallah. So uh, let me, you know, uh, 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 Mufti Nadim, this is uh, it, it. Almost reminds me of what uh, what happened to the Sahaba. You know, when when uh, when they started their dawah in Mecca, for instance, where uh, they were put in a situation, you know, almost like sanctions were put on them where uh, the, the sahaba or the muslims were put in a situation where they were eating grass uh, but the muslims did come out of the situation so when you are looking at this uh, I, I mean what should be the perspective that we are looking at when you are seeing children uh, in this situation uh, what should be the steps taken uh, is it sacrifice and this is going to happen uh, and that we should have a clear vision that where we want to be, where, where uh, we need to go from here, or is it, uh, what, what do you see with this situation? Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, wa salatu wa salamu ala sayyid al-anbiya'i wal mursaleen, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in amma ba'd. Um, the comparison you did uh, is... Uh, I think it's an acceptable comparison, and that is because um, whatever uh, guidance we want, we can get it from the Quran and from the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So there are some differences. The difference between uh, the sanctions that were imposed upon Rasulullah alaihi salatu wasallam and his family in Shabi Abi Talib uh, at that time, not many people were Muslims, and they did not have outside support. The only a uh, few Muslims were in Mecca and they were all, uh, you know, the sanctions were imposed on them. Nowadays, the situation is much different. I mean, the sanction, the situation could be similar as uh, the brother described that uh, people are selling their children and um, they're starving to death. 
but there are a lot of a lot of muslim com uh, con muslim muslims around the world many muslim countries uh, many muslim organizations organizations charity organizations they can go out and support them so i think the strategy is uh, should be that uh, the afghan government should uh, seek help on the international forum which they are and afghanis and muslim ummah uh, whether they are in america or in england or anywhere in the world they should have a uh, means to support the afghani brothers and sisters uh, in this type of difficulty so that's the uh, only solution at this time they need help and ummah has to come forward so abu talha uh, uh, the sheikh is saying they need help the ummah has to come forward what what do you see how should the ummah come forward well, uh, uh, Assalamu alaikum uh, wa rahmatullah and uh, again, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulihi al-Kareem wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Well, the, uh, the situation in Afghanistan is uh, multi-dimensional. The first uh, dimension, of course, uh, is the uh, uh, full implementation of Islam. That's very important. Uh, so that uh, so that we as uh, Muslims we uh, can expect the uh, support and the relief and the uh, direct victory from Allah Azza wa Jal. This is a must. Uh, and that said, uh, we have to realize, uh, and of course the brothers in Afghanistan have to realize that the uh, today the international community, which is led. Uh, almost entirely by the United States uh, of America, which had been in Afghanistan for 20 years and is responsible for the devastating situation and for keeping Afghanistan absolutely in a desperate situation. So this international community, uh, as I said, led by the United States, Europe and uh, China and the others, uh, definitely they will not come forward to help and aid Afghanistan uh, without uh, very stringent uh, conditions. Uh, and these conditions uh, in the first place is to make sure that Afghanistan or Taliban uh, continue to keep what is called the Islamic uh, laws and systems within the boundaries which are acceptable uh, and uh, uh, prone to the to the interests uh, of this international community. So our our problem, our real problem, is the international aid. So that must be known, uh, and we do not trust uh, the uh, World Bank or IMF. Uh, these are the guys who have made uh, Pakistan so uh, in desperate situation, have made uh, Africa an absolutely devastated uh, situation and will make sure that Afghanistan will continue to be dependent uh, uh, on the on the West. And that's absolutely dangerous. Now, having said that, uh, the what are the, uh, the other means? Well, uh, uh, other means, uh, now before even I go to, uh, to other means, I want to say that even the, the Muslim countries, uh, like Qatar in the first place, like uh, Turkey, Pakistan, all of these, have very very strong uh, ties uh, with the with the United States and the West at large, uh, and uh, and continue to be within their boundaries, uh, and they feel uh, very serious a threat from Afghanistan in case Afghanistan implements full Islam. So we have to be again careful. So then, uh, as the question is, what is next? Well. Uh, the uh, the development from inside uh, and with uh, uh, with very uh, reasonable uh, support from uh, Islamic organizations. I'm not. I'm strictly here about states. I will not uh, rely on help from uh, Muslim states. Uh, I need to rely on resources, uh, real resources in the Muslim Ummah, and there are plenty of them. Uh, to attract these resources and uh, from my own experience uh, Muslims uh, individuals groups parties they are more than uh, happy and willing and uh, forthcoming to really provide the necessary support to build 
an infrastructure. Uh, yes, we are going to suffer for some time. We have been suffering for more than 30 years already in Afghanistan. We are, have been suffering in many other countries. So that's not something new. Uh, Afghanistan had not been in disparate unemployment situation only after the United States had left Afghanistan devastated. It had been in the same, same situation for the last 30 years. Uh, Afghanistan did not have the this economic uh, uh, desperate situation today after August 31st. It had been having it has been having that for a long time already. So we can, as the 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 uh, your question there, the Sahaba Rudwanullahi alayhim they did uh, preserve their uh, they, they were uh, resilient during the uh, Shab. Uh, uh, Bani Hashim uh, boycott. Uh, they were very resilient. They did not compromise on their ideas, on their thoughts, on their Islam. Uh, in Medina, uh, during the Ahzab uh, war, they were absolutely resilient and they stood, uh, stood fast. It was a very desperate situation. But then the point is uh, we are not going to grieve and cry and start uh, uh, yawning about the situation. We need to get to get to work. Uh, so uh, the the Muslim Ummah, the Ummah, I'm very uh, precise here. I'm not talking about states. Uh, this Ummah is willing to provide the utmost support, uh, given that, given that Afghanistan continues to uh, to to insist on the implementation of of the Islamic laws completely at all levels, economic, political, as well as social. Number one, number two that it has to absolutely uh, 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 severe all relationship with anyone who is who has been responsible for the uh, uh, for putting afghanistan in this situation for the last uh, 30 years and of course before that as well as the muslim ummah that's very important today you cannot advance any part of the muslim ummah whether it's in pakistan or iran or turkey or Egypt or others, uh, until and unless you rely completely on your own resources, Muslim resources. The moment you have one one piece, one piece of interrelations, especially in the economic and financial situation, you are dead right there. Uh, uh, and brother, then, uh, one, one second, uh, Sheikh, uh, brother Rahmatullah, you know, Abu Talha, uh, obviously he's saying that, uh, I mean, you you are running uh, you have an islamic uh, you know uh, there is a charity organization i understand how charity organizations work what is i mean how do we uh, look at let's say you know let's look at it as independent and as muslims who independently uh, wanting to resolve the situation without making afghanistan dependent uh, look i understand the, the game the world bank uh, the world bank wants to play the imf wants to play uh, the uh, the w you know world food organization is there uh giving out uh, flour i heard in the millions of uh, pounds and things like this but you know i have seen when uh wfp gets on the ground what happens what happens to the farmers in the future whenever they usually come in and then they 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 will give out this food for almost 6 months 7 months if not a year and then but it destroys the crops, it destroys the lands, it uh, destroys the whole agricultural process. And uh, no farmer wants to sell his product in the market where everything is being given out for free. So is it suffering now and, and, and build something for the future? Or is it, let's see what we can get now and let's, let's hope good for good for the future. What's the deal here? Jazakallah khairab. <clears throat> I need to clarify. It's uh, 3.30 in Germany, so I might not be articulative uh, well enough you know because of uh, i have not slept yet so forgive me for that in advance and inshallah uh, you are right actually i have seen this problem uh, in provinces like nuristan you know they bring in millions tons of seeds and flour and the the, the farmers they the, the the prices drop they can't really get out of uh, their line nothing so what can be done in terms of economical developments concerned, uh, even the Americans, they have announced that people can donate to Afghanistan uh, for humanitarian causes. If Brother Abdullah explained very well, if the Muslim Ummah in general 
they send their sadaqat and zakat forget about the state even if the state within their own and you know limitation if they imagine we are 52 states and each one of them donate 5 million or 10 million i believe 10 million uh, is literally nothing i mean some of the saudi prince they spend 10 millions in few one week or some would claim a night uh, they can spend that amount uh, if they can donate i'm sure that money can be used and more you know for more sustainable solutions what can be done is to build factories um, to build uh, infrastructure for hospitals so people don't have to travel here and there to build roads um, of course to educate the people because the second crisis people up in afghanistan is there's no talent uh, whoever was a doctor engineer uh, pilot i mean anybody who was expert in that area uh, he has left the country so I can tell you one story. Uh, one guy who was actually building a masjid, which is sponsored by Islamic Oasis in Afghanistan, and he was a painter in the masjid, you know, a builder in the masjid. And suddenly he came to office, I can no longer work. And we asked why. He said, I'm now general in the army in a very technical field. Uh, so therefore, I have to take care of that responsibility. And uh, I can't build the masjid. Imagine. You know, a general of army, like I'm not talking about thousands, I'm talking about like not hundreds of thousands of people he's responsible. He has a helicopter under his command and everything. And what was his previous job? He was a builder. And I'm sure he cannot even write his own name. So we have that kind of problem in Afghanistan to train people and to just give them ads, especially uh, bringing them those from, from which country they are buying it, from Tajikistan, from Pakistan, from Uzbekistan. So again, the actual economy is not supported. You are bringing food, they will eat. Of course, it has an effect on local community. And after what, you can't do anything. What can be done to work on more sustainable solutions, support local businesses, set up macro businesses, support the entrepreneurial side of Afghanistan, build infrastructure, support the government, the healthcare and everything. And inshallah, the solution will be there. But the current solution, what the international community is offering is not the solution. Uh, Sheikh uh, uh, Mufti Nadim, uh, is the scholarly community, I mean, how uh, and what perspectives should they be giving uh, to this uh, crisis situation in Afghanistan, uh, given that the Taliban are calling for Islam, uh, are wanting to implement Islamic law? Uh, so shouldn't the ulama be the number one, yani, uh, you're the, the the front line of trying to uh, yani create and raise awareness amongst the ummah not just in one region but in, in the muslim in the muslim ummah as a whole i mean what do you think about about the role that the ulama should play listening to what is happening now with afghanistan first of all the problem is that many ulama <clears throat> unfortunately are worried that should we even talk about this issue or not? Should we even mention the name Afghanistan, Taliban or not? Because the moment they say something about Taliban or Afghanistan, it's possible that they uh, their statements may be censored and they might have some issues. So mostly ulama are very careful when it comes to the situation in Afghanistan. That's the first problem. The second problem is that the ummah is divided already into many different sects mm -hmm. so um mainly even if you check on wikipedia about afghanistan it, it says that imarat islamia which is a deobandi government so the the whole country or the whole movement is considered that it is owned by uh Deoban. so those people who do not uh, associate themselves to this school of thought um for whether they are out in afghanistan or outside of afghanistan mainly outside of afghanistan i'm talking about ulama so they're not as uh, vocal as they should be because they're thinking that it's a particular movement and uh many times you know this is a problem it's not our movement so it's not our thing it's not the same school of thought that i follow that's another issue so now the only few voices that i hear is from uh pakistan uh, in India, for example, if you speak about uh, this issue, you go to jail. I mean, there's no way you can talk about it. So it's pretty tough in India for Muslims. 
Uh, as for Pakistan, I have heard some ulama, uh, they are in, uh, I know Mufti Taqir Osmani, Hafizahullah. Um, when the Taliban took over, he uh, sent, according to the social media, he sent several messages to the Taliban leadership. There were other scholars who were in contact with the, uh, with the Taliban, giving them some, um, you know, Islamic guidelines and how to run the country and how to run, how to make it successful. So I don't know. I'm not aware if those that that communication channel is still open. But at least there was an attempt uh, after in uh, after 15th of August. So uh, we need to raise this awareness in the ummah that it is not a particular sect. Uh, it's not the victory of a few uh, Muslims. In fact, this is an opportunity for the entire Muslim ummah to see full fledged, complete Sharia being implemented. This is the only region where the hope is alive. You uh, would not expect this thing in uh, Saudi or in Qatar or in Turkey. Rather, you would expect this thing only in Afghanistan in today's uh, time. So if we, uh, you know, at least by making dua, by speaking uh, for the people of Afghanistan and by speaking in, in the favor of the, of the Sharia, if ulama come forward, I think uh, there would be an, a great opportunity and these types of opportunities don't come uh, that quick. So, uh, Talha, these type of opportunities don't come that quick. Uh, now, yani, there is a brain drain in Afghanistan. Uh, we understand, as hopefully, as a, yani, the Muslim, as intellectuals, uh, lo looking at this situation for the last, uh, you know, 50 whatever years, uh, uh, you know, looking for an opportunity uh, to to you know uh, to get to this point, how do we make sure that we don't blink here, Abu Talha? You know, if you well, you... well uh, we make sure that we don't blink if we keep our eyes focused on the uh, on Islam and what does Islam say, uh, and on uh, because this is what we are about. We are not about. Uh, building a nation, any nation. We are about building uh, uh, an Islamic state, uh, a state for all the Muslims, because that's what an Islamic state, an Islamic state is not an Afghani Islamic Republic or Islamic Emirat. Uh, once I know, uh, for example, as a Muslim, uh, speaking not only for myself as Abu Talha, but for many uh, people who are Muslims, what once I know that this is my state, this is the state that uh, represents me, this is the state that uh, represents the laws and the systems that I believe in, uh, then uh, my complete devotion as a Muslim uh, will uh, be with that state, number one. Uh, number two, uh, I would say that from uh, day one, or even before day one, before I came to power, before Taliban was able to come to power, they should have Although they were fighting, they were in the jihad, they were uh, against the Americans, since we knew and they knew that at some point of time when victory comes and the United States pulls out, uh, I need to run a state. Uh, and running a state means to build an infrastructure immediately to uh, actually to have a plan for infrastructure uh, in order to build an absolutely independent economy. Whereas the brother uh, uh, has said, and you have said, uh, brother Shirazi, that if I bring food from outside, we know how America devastated many countries like uh, Haiti, like Africa, like even Syria today, or Iraq, where they deprived them of their ability to 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 grow their own their own grain because they 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 still the here's the thing about on the on this thing, and I, I want to ask the same question to uh, to, to all all of you here. The, the the problem is if you can speak a little bit more about look uh, my experience in in Syria especially when it comes to you know what I found is that a lot of Islamic or the Muslim activists they are emotional and they they about the fact that they they want to live in the Islamic state they they want to work for Islamic state they want to see it happen but the the thing is the moment it comes down to governing. And uh, talking about the economics, talking about making things uh, actually work economically, no one has a clue. Well, well, no, it's not that uh, no one has a clue. The ones who don't have a clue are the ones who have not seriously thought 
comprehensively about what does it mean to have a state in general, leave alone an Islamic state. Uh, to have mm -hmm. a state means you need to have an independent state. There is a different difference between just having a state and running a government, uh, being dependent on many other uh, factors. That's one. The other thing is to have an absolutely independent state, and that's what an Islamic state is. Islamic state cannot be dependent on any other factors outside the, the, the realms and the scope of the Islamic state. Now, one of that, one of this key independence is to have an absolutely uh, uh, stable infrastructure. And by infra stable infrastructure, I just want to bring some experience in the, in the recent history. Uh, I remember when I studied in the Soviet Union uh, a while ago, one of the things that they taught us that in 1917, when they had their revolution at the time when Russia was devastated, the, the Communist Party, which I don't want really to compare us to Communist Party, but just to bring a recent example, uh, uh, they insisted that there is no way in the world they will buy uh, agricultural means like tractors from Germany or from Britain or from France because that will not allow them independence. And we saw that the Soviet Union built their uh, empire in less than 15, in less than 10 years, actually. By uh, the Second World War, they were able to participate in a very uh, uh, massive uh, world war, uh, whereas in the, before that, they couldn't. Now, having said that, going back to the Medina at the time of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, remember uh, that in Medina, when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam knew that we are going to be in war with many in jihad with many other places he sent people to learn how to make swords he sent someone to medina to learn this industry now that's very could be a very simple example but in reality it gives us the notion uh, he was insisting on building an infrastructure so that he knows that his swords are not bought from the jews or from the uh, from other places today uh, it may sound difficult, but in reality, it's not. Building an economic infrastructure means start building a heavy industrial base. Heavy industrial base, that's, in. Uh, if you come to think about it, it's, you don't have to be Japan from day one or China from day one, but at least to start putting some, some grounds for what does it take to industrialize the country and once I industrialize it, then I can industrialize my agriculture. I can industrialize my education. I can focus on building education institutions from schools uh, all the way up so that within a few years, I have an army of people who can build, not an army of people who only can fight. We know we can fight. We know we can survive. We know uh, we can do uh, miracles in, uh, on the ground when we fight. But we have to make sure we make miracles so that on the ground we can grow our grain, we can grow our machines, we can grow. And that's not difficult. Look, today, today in Afghanistan, Taliban needs to formulate uh, a foundation not for receiving charity. Uh, yes, I do accept sadaqa from sincere Muslims, but I will always be very careful on what this money is attached to, what is the link behind the money, that's definitely I have to, but I have to build a foundation today, not tomorrow. Today I must build a foundation, and this foundation is for building a complete infrastructure which allows me to be independent tomorrow. Now, if I do that as Taliban today, you will find people like me, like many other scientists in the, in the, uh, in the industry, in computer and mechanicals, they are more than willing to sacrifice their leisure life in the U.S., in Europe, in many other places for the sake of building something very stringent and strong for Muslims. And as Brother uh, uh, Nadim mentioned, uh, 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 this is uh, a time for uh, Muslims to come forward through, and I'm not talking about states, I'm not talking about governments, governments and states Today are the tools and the front end of America and Europe. It, 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 it's, it's given. 
I do not trust Qatar. I do not trust Turkey. I do not trust Iran for that matter. I do not trust Pakistan as countries, as governments. Cut, uh, cut all this, the, the, these uh, uh, hopes uh, from these uh, these places. Uh, focus on the Muslim Ummah. Build a foundation. Make a call immediately. Make a call for all Muslims. Uh, 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 unite as uh, yeah. individuals, as organizations, come and help right now. I need oh, your one help. Second, one second, one second. One, one, one second. So, just, no, no, let, let me just finish. And I guarantee you, and I guarantee to brothers Taliban, they will be overwhelmed with the amount and the quantity of very sincere Muslims who have the knowledge and who have the know-how and who can, uh, can work for zero money, for zero. They are not going to look for salaries. They will use their own savings, their, their own savings, and come with their brains and their talent. Given that, given that, I know that my effort is going to raise the to to, to raise the level of this uh, uh, state, which is the current hope. As brother, uh, that's what I want to say. As brother Nadim said, this is the current hope. This is the but, current immediate today. Here's it's, the thing. I'm not uh, talking about tomorrow. Yes, Mufti Nadim. Here's the thing. Look, uh, this is. Uh, the current hope you, uh, you 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 use the right words. You said like, look, we can't find this type of situation anywhere else in the world, and it is uh, this area, this part of the world. It is Afghanistan. How do we make sure that we don't we don't lose this opportunity, Sheikhi? What is yani, you know we we the Muslim the Ummah has been struggling to see this situation for the last hundred years. Yani, Turkey, you, you you know you look at Turkey today. Turkey is. Uh, celebrating uh, the, the birth or the death, whatever it is, of uh, of Ataturk, uh, they are still stuck in, in in that whatever mode. And how do we? How do I, how, you know? I guess I'm asking you this as a scholar: that how do you make sure that this hope does not die? Right. See, uh, we need to understand that what is the biggest problem that the world has with Afghanistan today. The biggest problem is not that they uh, the, the the U.S. military pulled out. Uh, the biggest problem is not that there was, uh, you know, they destroyed the statues in Bamiyan uh, 17, 18 years ago. The biggest problem is the word Sharia. That they are very open about it, that they want, we, we want to implement the Sharia. Whether they will be 100% uh, be able to implement the Sharia or not, that's, uh, you know, a different story. And perhaps we will know this in the future. But the biggest problem that the whole world has is that Taliban want to implement uh, the Sharia. Therefore, people who are not in Afghanistan currently, uh, ulama around the world, they need to speak about the Sharia. They need to speak the justice system about the Sharia. The Sharia is not a barbaric system, as some people, um, you know, claim or some people propagate uh, against it. If the, the issue is that Afghani diaspora in America, in Germany, and in many parts of the world, they themselves are against that Sharia system that Taliban is trying to bring in. Uh, perhaps they were told different stories about, uh, you know, Allahu Alam, uh, if they were told that Sharia is cruel or, what, or whatever, maybe they believed in all uh, that nonsense. But the thing is that, you know, I let me tell you my personal experience. I was invited here in America in uh, one of the cities. I don't want to mention its name. And it was particularly in Afghani Masjid where a large community of Afghani brothers and, uh, brothers and sisters were present. I was told before I give a speech that make sure that you don't say anything about Afghanistan. It was uh, in September. I said, well, I'm in an Afghani, uh, Afghani community and you want me not to say anything about Afghanistan? He said, yeah, I mean, you can say, you can talk about the plight over there, but don't, you know, say anything about Taliban because people over here hate Taliban. They were all, uh, mashallah, I mean, good looking Muslim brothers with the turban and the, they had small children uh, attending the uh, Quran graduation program. So it's not like they were not attached to the masjid. They were attached to the masjid. They apparently attached to Islam or Islamic practices. But when it comes to Taliban, they hated them because they thought the Taliban were cruel and they wanted to implement the uh, hardcore version of the Sharia. So Allahu Alam, what uh, what happened in uh, 23, uh, 20 years ago. But the fact of the matter is that ulama need to come forward and they need to talk about more and more the uh, just justice system of the Sharia. And that's how the Muslim community around the world will feel comfortable about the Sharia system. And imagine if somebody wants to go uh, and move to Afghanistan, at least he knows that I'm going to a safer place.
brother uh, rahmatullah the, you know the media versus reality here you know i uh, i was listening to some of the journalists yesterday i guess i don't know if they're working for the us as far as you know for different media channels and things like this you know when you hear them they're saying oh the people were devastated the taliban came into power and all you know this and that and then when i heard uh, the five pillars uh, you know this uh, uh, these are journalists from uk a muslim journalists from uk who went there and they are now uh, literally they, they are they you know, they're discussing live with the people on the streets uh, of course everyone it seems people are talking about uh, trying to make a living trying to find a you know figure out a way how they can survive uh, but i didn't see you know is it what is what do you see amongst the people when you are talking to your own families there when you're talking to the brothers who are working for you the foundation there what is the public opinion there what do you see and feel uh, that, that that with with this new situation on the ground jazakallah um, khair just to catch up on the previous conversations uh, actually the current economical issue that afghanistan is facing and what's right now happening and all the chaos uh, and we we do have internal issues we should not only blame it on the westerners or the people outside the internal issue is that the taliban knew two years back that they will be taking over the they will be taking over the government it was very clear to them you in fact Yes, Ashraf Ghani was told six months ago that you should hand over the government. And then later on, they were also informed that some of the provinces you will take. In fact, they were controlling 70% of Afghanistan for many, many years. But there was no economical development in those areas. And there was no concern for economical education developments. They were only concerned for war and fighting. So that's something that we should criticize uh, them so they understand their weaknesses and improve them inshallah even when they took over all the provinces and kabul was left ashraf ghani and taliban they were in contact this is surprising actually they were in contact between each other and zalmay khalizat who was a representative of america there there was he was also in contact between each other he was the middleman and taliban told ashraf ghani the previous government that you don't need to run away we will give you 10 ministries to your people and stay, let's form a government. And it was very clear that if they give them 10 ministry and they form an exclusive government, they, the international community will not terrorize Afghanistan through economical sanctions. So they, he was actually informed, whatever the reason behind is, to leave and everything should be the way it is right now. But actually there were efforts in the end to form an inclusive government, which is clear. These things are not something I'm saying from my own self. They're clear in the media and people have spoken about it. Uh, even in fact, there was a video recorded by Ashavani that we will form an inclusive government, you know, so on and so forth. But the video, I think they did not put it online. Now coming to the current situation in Afghanistan. The, in Afghanistan, we do not have Muslims who are 100% upon the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We do have liberal, secular, in fact, even atheists. So the most Afghans who 100% agree with the Taliban are the rural Muslim. And they do not form the academia or the scientific community in Afghanistan. So the people who are actually in the developing cities like Kabul and other not all of them 100% agree with the Taliban. That, that should be made clear, actually. Not all of them. And of course, people who have been brainwashed, uh, let, we should also make this clear that when we talk about Sharia, when we talk about Islam, we do not mean in and out 100% Taliban. No, we Taliban can have mistakes and they can't be with a lot of flaws. But Sharia and Islam is completely a different concept that we are talking about establishing the Sharia, not necessarily establishing the Taliban regime. No, we can use Taliban as a tool. Um, if there are some mistake to rectify it, and inshallah, they have put a lot of efforts into it and, you know, form uh, a government which is for uh, Islam and for the Muslim. 
So coming back to the question, yes, there are people in Afghanistan who agree with them and there are people in Afghanistan who don't agree with them. We should not forget they were in 20 years war and there will be people who have lost their family members. I have lost my family members. I have lost my friends and they were killed in a manner that were not justified from Islamic principles. And I hold my grudges and my questions to authorities. When the time comes, I will definitely ask these questions. So there are mixed feelings and I'm definitely worried as a form of the internal issue i've actually listed 10 internal issues which need to be worked on uh number one is rectifying the revenge game which happened back in 80s and then again in 90s just like you know uh rwanda wakanda wakanda not wakanda actually no you know one, these countries one. these countries are still suffering with these revenge game and if imagine a guy who was a talib and a person who was in previous government he killed his father, brother, whole family, and now he's there. Maybe someday he can control, but maybe one day he cannot control. What's the plan? So what I'm trying to say, economically speaking, the Taliban did not take this matter in a, a matter of concern for themselves because the area they were, they were ruling, uh, there was not much economy uh, happening and the city were ruled by the government. Uh, even entering Kabul wasn't the plan, actually, that they will enter Kabul this quickly but it all happened, you know, simultaneously, and now they're in control. But coming back to the question, we can say that Taliban are enjoying all whole uh, hearted support from the people, but not 100%. There are okay. people who are against them because of multiple reasons that we all understand. Okay, so uh, Abu Talha, here, here's the deal. Yeah, you know, uh, so let's go back a few years. Uh, you, you look at... Uh, you, you look at the Egyptian situation when the revolution takes place, uh, you have a group comes into power but does not know exactly how to rule, uh, does not have a constitution. Uh, the solution for the economic crisis, uh, when, uh, when, when it is put in power, it says that it will go to the IMF. Uh, you know, and, and here I'm discussing Morsi here. And uh, in many ways had no clue what he was going to do and or what the whole group was going to do. Uh, then... Within a year, they are put out of power uh, and even killed in jails. Then you have the situation in Tunis uh, where a supposed Islamic movement comes into power. Uh, then again, the uh, same uh, situation takes place and now out of power. Uh, now, are we, do you see, uh, you know, be, be, I've seen you in Tunis and I've seen you during the time of the revolution in Tunis. Uh, I, I know you've been to uh, Egypt. I know you, you're in Jordan now. Uh, what do you see happening in Afghanistan? Is it Tunis, Libya, uh, Egyptian situation, or is it uh, is it that they need time to learn? Well, uh, it's it's a little bit different, brother, from uh, what happened with the Arab Spring, uh, for sure. The Arab Spring came as uh, part of an internal revolt uh, against uh, internal regimes. In Afghanistan, there was no internal regime. Internal regime was uh, a puppet of the United States. It was installed by the occupier. It was under occupation. There was a war oh, for independence and liberation. Uh, and so the uh, brothers, uh, Allah Azza wa Jal had blessed them and they were able to, uh, to evict the occupier. So there is uh, uh, gaining power uh, by the proper uh, uh, method and uh, for a long time of struggle. That's number one. Uh, number two, I just want to mention again, uh, this should have been in the dictionary, in the vocabulary of the uh, of the leadership, at least, of the, uh, of the group that was, uh, uh, because uh, it was expected at any point of time that the occupier will run away as it, uh, it happened. So then what, then what, what is it that I'm going to build? I guess that's we what have, I'm asking you. That's what I'm asking yeah, you. Exactly. Like no so one this was is, prepared. Uh, in this case, in this case, I myself as a Muslim, as uh, a person who is in this, uh, uh, in this type of struggle, uh, I should expect myself to be in a position of ruling position at any point of time. Otherwise, I'm not serious. If I am serious uh, on of my work, and I believe in my work, and I believe in the support of Allah Azza wa Jal, then I do expect that one day, today or tomorrow, I will be in a position of ruling. 
So I sh I must have prepared. What does ruling mean? Ruling it requires a political system, it requires economic system, social system, education system, industrial system. All of this is has had to be prepared uh, in my brain as a model. I otherwise otherwise I'm just uh, playing it by the time. So okay, when it comes, it comes. I will. That's not the way to do it. But nevertheless, I know for sure today that uh, the brothers who are who who control control Afghanistan today have not seriously thought about the the uh, horizons of the responsibilities that falls upon their shoulders. Uh, their main goal was to evict the Americans, and they did. Now, what's next? Because this is the the issue that you are uh, you brought today on this uh, platform. What is next? What's next is to be able to run a state and to build the whole infrastructure. And when I talk about infrastructure, I mean you need your political system internally and externally, internal relations and external relations, all to be already thought about and I will define something called constitution so I come and implement my constitution today not tomorrow and this constitution must be absolutely Islamic as brother Nadim was talking it has to be there number two when I talk economic system I should know what does economy mean at least I should have consultants from the economic field who are very uh, uh, sincere Muslims to be to, to, to be with me. I don't need the complete support of the Afghani people. We know the mix of the nations in our world. Mix of nations, they have been created purposely for the last hundred years by secularists, by uh, capitalists, by communists, by etc. They created the mix of our nations. So we know what the mix of the nation is, but nevertheless, now I have power. I have power. And I have gained the power, just like when the Prophet ﷺ migrated to Medina, the mix of Medina was terrible. It was not all Ansar. And the fact is that in the Battle of Uhud, one third of the army pulled out because Medina was a very strange mix of people. It was not only Ansar and Muhajireen. It was people, regular people, who some of them accepted Islam just uh, to avoid some hassle or to be part of the uh, regime of the new state but the mix of the people will never be completely within with the leadership from day one but if I accept the leadership and I gain power then I should use this power and this position to make sure that the people trust me day after day and that part of the trust is when they see that I am building my state day by day from September 1st until today, today we are almost uh, two months and uh, and a half in this position. Two months and a half in the age of a new government is a lot. That's a lot. That's not something that's not uh, uh, counted only the, oh, we have been there only 60 some days. No, 60 some days every day. Today, I'm telling you, brother Shirazi and brother Rahmat, uh, Rahmatullah and brother Nadim, today, if uh, I'm talking about myself, being a, a student of Islamic movement for the last uh, 40 or 50 years of my life. Today, if I'm in power in any place in the world, whether it's big country like Afghanistan or small country like Jordan, I have a roadmap. I have a roadmap in my mind and I start implementing that roadmap immediately. And therefore, I will start pulling all the forces which are needed to build the state immediately. I will start accepting look and here i have to be blunt brothers in taliban until now they have refused to meet with one of the most prominent islamic movements that had been working in this movement to create an islamic state with all the means at least meet the people and see what they can help you talking are, about this is uh, I, I, I i've heard that uh, uh hizb tahrir has actually presented yes. a, a memorandum to but, uh to 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 the taliban but I, but I, I haven't heard that it, uh, either a rejection of it or acceptance no, no, no. of it yet. Let, let me let me just clear. Yes, we did send a mem not a memorandum. We did send a very high level delegation. The brothers in Taliban, the five prominent members whom we addressed the memorandum, refused to meet the delegation, and we have tried all means just to make sure the memorandum reached there. 
look, if I was in Taliban there, I would be the first people to meet, actually, to invite, not, not to wait until they send me a delegation and say, guys, you have been doing this for the last uh, 60, 70 years. What do you have? They should come forward to me, but nevertheless, we did. And we sought all types of means. Let's talk. Let's tell you what we can offer. They refused to meet with us. They did not respond to the letter yet, neither positive nor negative. And it has been since September 5th. We have more than two months. Look, this is this tells me that you are, unfortunately, brothers Taliban continue to talk to Qatar and to Pakistan government. These are the sources of trouble and evil from day one. Pakistan is the one that facilitated the first war the 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 uh, after the withdrawal of uh, of the soviet union all of these parties which they devastated afghanistan until taliban came to power and they came to power with the help of pakistan and today they came with the help of qatar and we are continue to talk to qatar we so continue to, to rely on in turkey look what i'm saying is we as muslims and i can i can i stand up behind my words behind my words that if taliban opens the door they will have the very, very, very strong and serious help and support from so many people in the world, from people who really can do things at the level of the laws, constitutions, infrastructure, building the, 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 the framework. And that requires the talent. I know you were fighting on the, uh, in uh, Tora Bora in the mountains and you were out of, uh, of reach of all of this intellectual type of things. True. And we, we understand that. But now you are in power. You can open a channel. Look, form a committee. Just form a committee immediately. Take a committee of four or five people. Rahmatullah, brother is there. He knows that. And he knows it can be done immediately. And this is, this is a mechanism. Attract, find me, the scientists, the know-how, the intellectuals, the imams, the ones who really have the Islamic brains, the intellectual, scientific, technology brains, find them to me and let's try to bring them down. I don't need your money now. I will say, look, I'm not looking for money. I'm looking for your brains, for your talents. Come over and help me. And I can assure you and I can assure brothers in Taliban today, come forward, come forward with very clean heart, just like your clean guns that you used. Uh, to 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 liberate Afghanistan, come with a clear and clean, clean brains and clean hearts and openness, and let us help you. We will. We are not here to criticize Afghanistan or Taliban. We are here as Muslim Ummah. We say, look, we need a place in the world where you can really show the entire world the Muslim, the Islamic model. Islamic model is not is not about how do we treat. Women or not women, as this 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 is a silly uh, talk. I will not even allow the international community to to have a discussion about how do I treat women or not treat women. I will not even give them a, a, a time to do that. They should be worried more about my that I am building a country from scratch. That's what the international community is going to be worried about, and they would run with all types of aid. Please, 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 please accept all our technology, all our money. Just don't do that. The world, look, America is not worried about implementing some inter uh, Islamic laws here and there. This is not true. That's, that's a fake. That's just to keep you busy with this. They are worried about you as a Muslim building a state that can be independent of the World Bank and the, the IMF and their aids and their bread coming in for free. That's what they are worried about. That's really what really keeps them uh, awake uh, at night. And as long as you are scrambling, trying to scramble what laws to implement in the constitution, what laws not to implement, as ah, they are still backward. They are still down. Let them keep We want to get out of this mess. I understand. And as he, uh, uh, brother, uh, Rahmatullah, he, you're listening to Abu Talha. You 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 see how passionate he is. Uh, While doing he, that, I will I will pray I will pray Fajr, brother. <laughs> well, yeah. okay. it's Fajr time. So, Let me pray no, Fajr. Go, 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 go pray Fajr. Go pray Fajr. The, so, uh, brother Rahmatullah, tell me you're listening to him. Uh, you know he's a scientist. He's a scholar. 
Uh, Mufti Nadim is here, but he has to, uh, he's teaching another class at nine o'clock, so he had to go. But you, you, you heard him say that, look, it's not going to be Pakistan that's coming to help you. It's not going to be Qatar that's going to come to help you. You are in a very unique situation. You're in a situation where you can build a state. You have a, you, you know, but do the Taliban have the, 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 the know-how, the brain that is needed to see uh, what is happening? I, I, can, are they listening to, 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 the, to the talks of the ulama and, you know, and saying that, look, I understand we are suffering today, but uh, you, do, do they have that vision? Jazakallah uh, brother. It's an important question. Do the Taliban have the brain or the capacity or the intelligence to understand what's happening and what can uh, help them to get out of the situation? I, I would argue, yes, they do. If they can beat uh, NATO and 42 uh, different countries, then of course they understand what's happening next. But I would uh, humbly suggest uh, maybe it's too earlier to send them a memorandum of understanding or MAU uh, because they have internal challenges, they haven't formed their government. I can tell you when they have come to power, they have changed around like four mayor of uh, Kabul. Four mayor, and they're all acting. They're, none of them are fully fledged mayors or ministers. They're still forming the government. They're still uh, planning how to form in. At the same time, they're struggling with the financial uh, problems uh, on the ground um, and they are still struggling with recognition of the Islamic Emirates. People are stuck here and there. So there, a lot of struggle is happening. I think it's too early to expect that they should be already open to the Muslim Ummah, already speaking to the ulama. If you need to speak you need to have a platform, you need to have an address. From which address are you speaking to them, right? So maybe as far as I understand, they want to set up those uh, grounds and those addresses and then speak to the Muslim Ummah. In case if they come and approach somebody, say, who are you? You're not even recognized. So I just want to uh, basically talk about, I have noted down a few things that I want to talk about. Uh, the external challenges that Afghanistan is facing right now. And I would say, number one, the Western countries and the Western general need to understand. We knew lost, just like in the school, when we had a wrestling match with the kids. No matter how many times you beat him up, they say, you know what? I flipped. I actually, you know, you didn't do anything. So again, whatever that happens, Taliban are in power. They are the leaders. They are the government in Afghanistan. To sanction Taliban is not necessarily a sanctioning Taliban because uh, based on my information, I don't think so. Any of the Taliban have bank account. But you're actually sanctioning the ordinary people, the orphan, the women, the children that you are advocating for their rights. You were speaking for 20 years, let's support the Afghan community, let's support the education, let's support the women. The same people you're abandoning, you're not sanctioning Taliban. They do not have any bank account. Name me one Talib that has a bank account either in the Western countries or even inside the Afghanistan. So to sanction economically, they're actually sanctioning or terrorizing economically the ordinary people. I think they should give them the chance of recognition they should allow them at least to function as a country. And they are allowing, actually. The embassies in America is functioning, and Canada is functioning, and UAE is functioning. Everywhere is functioning. It's not like the embassies are not functioning. These countries, they have embassies in Afghanistan. Their embassies are functioning. They should never compare what was in 1990s up to 2000 to 2021. No, they should not do that. Because at that time, the world was not that much interconnected. People did not depend so much on the bank transfer. A lot of internal, uh, you can say, community transfer-based system were created. At the same time, you can argue that at that time, Taliban did not hold full-fledged power in Afghanistan. In fact, 30% of the Afghanistan land was, uh, was, was controlled by Northern Alliance. And the Western countries were mostly dealing with them. Okay, you do not even have a second party to deal in Afghanistan. You do not have any space or land which is controlled by other than the Taliban. Then I think, as a, I'm not, I'm saying I'm an independent individual, but an independent individual, independent thinker, I do not think it's the good interest of humanity, humans, in general, and anybody in Afghanistan, or any, anyone actually, not even Afghan, to not recognize the Afghan government, 
you can pressure them you can do you can use other means but do not torture or do not starve the ordinary afghan i think that's one message that i want to send across uh, to the people and do if once the economy is collapsed it will be very difficult to you know reestablish what's happening right now to lebanon what happened to venezuela if they want to do the same thing to afghanistan it will take years in fact decades to recover the currency or the economy back the second thing that i personally have problem with the muslim countries the muslim states imagine they can recognize they can work they can normalize their con con conversation and lives with israel apartheid state which is known for brutality in the killing of innocent children women and everybody but then they are not willing to even talk about the afghanistan issue just like mr uh, mufti nadim mentioned you have no problem normalizing relationship with them but your problem with afghanistan you're putting extra parameters and conditions I, the Afghan government need to fulfill these conditions in order for me to talk to them. But you have no problem talking to Israel and accepting them and welcoming them. In fact, giving them holidays and, you know, red carpet services and welcome. So that's, I think we need to be realistic. We need to be realistic and, uh, in, in, this, in, in this regard. The second thing is actually the Muslims in general. I would humbly request that the Muslims... In fact, some of the fuqaha, they, they say that you can pay your zakat in advance. If you pay, for example, 2020, you can pay 2022 zakat. If they can support the organizations like Islamic Oasis, working on the ground in Afghanistan, Kamal is working on the ground, other organizations in their locality that they trust, they should support, send their donations, speak to them. I have been discussing with organizations in America, with, I'm, I'm sure we had a discussion that we should visit Afghanistan, build hospital, support the community, uh, I've been discussing this with the uh, Canadian organization. We want to build umbrella organizations with some of the people in, from Qatar, some of the people from uh, UK, even Germany. We have been discussing these, like if we can gather like 10, 15 organizations and we work on sustainable solutions for Afghan living in Afghanistan. So that's something the Muslim Ummah, ordinary Ummah, they can definitely, you know, send their donation earlier stage than wait. I'm sure the doors will open, come visit. Maybe you can do something else. But in this first stage, the you know, financial support is much needed. But once things are established, of course, you can even move there, work online, you know, digital nomads are everywhere. So you can even choose Afghanistan uh, as, a, as a one of your location for digital, uh, as a digital nomad. So these are some of the external challenges that Afghans are right now facing. If we have time, I will definitely talk about the internal challenges that people are facing inside the Afghanistan. Uh, I, I hope I did not go over the topic or took too much time. No, no, no. This is uh, this is what we want to know. I mean, you are. I mean, obviously, you are mentioning what the Muslims in general, you know, the, the, the Muslims in general can do. Uh, Abu Talha, uh, uh, we have to ask a few questions. I haven't. Where are the? I, can you send the questions here? I don't have any questions here. Oh, uh, I, we have a few questions that we need to answer here. Uh, so, inshallah, I. Uh, look, this is uh, this discussion needs to continue. It's just that um, Sheikh, I just want to comment on two things. Just want to comment, uh, and I share with you a funny story. I have seen news agencies like Voice of America, BBC, discussing the rights of LGBT communities in Afghanistan, and they were numbered. How many people are LGBT in this community? About thirty. And they were actually marching on a different media agencies that you should face these, uh, save these communities. And I would say, <laughs> if you're too bothered about gays and lesbian, then I would argue all Afghans are gay. <laughs> <laughs> then maybe the people will come. <laughs> yes, our women are lesbian. Sure. Our men are gay. I understand. So I understand the, the desperate you situation. Me, they were genuinely approaching people, talking, "Come forward. If you're one of them, we will help you, give you food. If you need even cash support." Subhanallah. Where is justice? Only these yeah. communities are human, or the rest are not. So here's uh, Abu Talha. Is this? Uh, you know, you you heard what uh, uh, Brother Rahmatullah is saying. Let me ask you this: uh, Do you think? Uh, you know, uh, like he said something, for instance, he said that, you know, uh, let's say organizations that are not really recognized or un unknown, uh, they, they will not just uh, give them that support. But at the same time, 
you know, I was asking Brother Rahmatullah also, do they do the Taliban really have the know-how to understand uh, uh, at what historical juncture the, you know they, they are at at this point? Uh, do you really think Abu Talha that they understand where they are? I mean, he of course he said, for instance, I mean, these are the people who have dis- dis- destroyed you know NATO and you know 20 other nations that came to destroy Afghanistan. They 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 they, they put them on their knees. Understood, alhamdulillah. But politically, is there the know-how? Is there is it is it there? And second, if you can just answer that before we go to the question, is Afghanistan can it really be uh, uh, the a, a place where everything really begins? And as far as a, as, a, as a state, a formation of a serious state. We can't hear you. Sheikh has a technical difficulty. Okay. All right. Never mind. Okay. So uh, let's go to the questions that I want uh, him to answer them. But uh, there's a question for you, uh, Brother Rahmatullah, here. It says uh, more details on the sale of the babies and children. Who are they being sold to? Okay. Okay. It's uh, people need to understand they were not like sold like commodities. How they are sold traditionally, like, okay, I have a girl and you have a son. So if you pay me this amount in advance, either in the form of mahar or they call it some, some sort of um, walwar, then I will give my daughter to you. So that's one form that people have done it. The second form is there are a lot of families and people who want to have a child or maybe adopt them. And they're saying, you know what, I can't feed him. But you can take away my child. But for me to have other children, if you can pay me this much, you know, it's not like a marketplace. People are bringing their babies and selling them. So it's not like that. It's uh, generally the way that I describe it. It's happening in this way. But some people are generally they're poor and they're saying, you know what? I can't take care of my babies. Anybody, anybody can feed them. Please take them away from me and just feed them. So th- these unfortunate stories are happening. In fact, I'm genuinely against it. Nobody should do that. If you are poor, you can sell yourself, I would say, sell your kidney. But those babies are innocent. They're not aware of anything. We should be protecting them. We should be showing them love and compassion instead of putting them in a, in a marketplace and selling them. That's not something wholeheartedly supported or whatsoever. But there are people doing sometime also to get some uh, uh, attention to, the, to their situation. Because everybody's saying, I'm hungry, I'm hungry, but nobody will pay you attention unless you say, I'm selling my baby. Then people come, why are you selling it? So then you, you will receive some help. So it's also met, become a method of attention. But it has happened a lot of stories. Babies were sold. And alhamdulillah, we are actually trying as an organization to find these people who sold their baby. One happened in Herat. And, you know, uh, help has been arranged for them so that money can be returned. So the baby is not entitled when he grew up or as a girl to definitely marry that man or that man's son. So those matters will be taken care of. I'm sure the government will take care of it. We will take care of it as a ummah, inshallah. But it's, there's no such market that people are bringing their babies and selling them. What are the, some uh, reasons why America and its allies uh, who are vocal about supporting human rights could withhold funds when they are desperately needed? Uh, I mean, the, the, the first thing we would say is the hypocrisy. Uh, it, as, as I mentioned earlier, it's, it's not, it's, it's, if, if really the human rights were the first thing to consider, then people have shown them. Uh, in fact, hum, human rights aren't even shown to people in California. You, you have a huge homeless problem within America. So it's more political and creating power on the ground. Uh, it's not really a human rights or women rights or children rights or blah, blah, all those rights. Uh, It's uh, if you are benefiting me and you're useful, you're somehow, you know, supporting my interest, you are becoming that within the rights. If not, go and die. That's how it is. So this is a question uh, for uh, Abu Talha. You're back. Can you hear me? Uh, Abu Talha, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. So here's the thing. Here's the question for you. Uh, I mean, I was asking him the same question because at the time we, we have to uh, get these things answered. Uh, the, the, the issue of uh, 
the, the know-how. I'm, I'm just saying that, look, uh, that, uh, Brother Rahmatullah was saying that, you know, the Taliban, they obviously they defeated NATO, they defeated 20 other countries that entered their lands. Uh, but I was asking him whether they really understood the meaning of taking power. Uh, that, that was one thing. And second, uh, he said something like, you know, if uh, an organization is not recognized, um, you know, they're not going to just turn around and, 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 and say, OK, come and, and, and take power uh, or come and, uh, you know, because of the issue of trust. What do you think about that? Hello? Yes. Uh, can you hear me, brother? We have two uh, of you. <laughs> It's better. No? No, you have two of them open. This is why. Right. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. Two minutes. Two minutes. Okay, let me, uh, until we fix this uh, issue, let me, let me, let me, uh, uh, Brother uh, uh, Rahmatullah, another question. Oh, are you good? Go ahead. We can hear you now. Yes, yeah, I, I'm okay. Now. No, we're not. You get. You came back again with two. Let me ask you, uh, Brother Rahmatullah, going back to, uh, you know, until we uh, get Abu Talha back. You are, obviously, you know, you're a teacher. You are running a school. You want to run the school. You, I know you have uh, huge ambitions in trying to set, set up a university there. You are actually working with the university students there. Uh, I know we have worked uh, together with trying to sponsor students there. Uh, uh, Brother Rahmatullah, what is your view? What do you think? Let's say if you and I are talking, uh, you know, uh, we're talking, let's say, obviously, as Let's say people who can do something on the ground, who can have some type of effect on the ground. What do you think uh, uh, we, we should be doing in order to help uh, this situation? Other than the charity thing, of course, meaning from the perspective of uh, building the mindset, building the minds, uh, what are the priorities that you would set? Let's say if the first three things, uh, if you were put in power right, right now, a Taliban said, come and help us. Uh, be part of the government. I know you, you probably reject it, but I'm, uh, you know, speaking from uh, as a Muslim, you say to them, "Look, I'm willing to help this way." What would be the what? What would you help them with? What would be a great your question. Yeah, there's a great. But by the way, you, I hope you're not forgetting that those people who are sitting in the yeah. university are sponsored by Islamic Oasis. So you know, <laughs> <laughs> mashallah. Uh, I would say. The, the the first three things that I would do, number one, build trust within the citizens, trust, uh, you know, citizen trusting the government, answering their questions, sitting with them, talking with them, and removing the barriers which has been created for the past 20 years or 40 years. That's one. And, you know, joining their struggle and understanding the government struggle so they understand what's happening. Number second, I would generally heavily invest on education and training so people can have skills and where they're skillful workers of course you can build the economy you can build almost everything science education and technology and number three i will be very much open to the muslim ummah to come forward the great ideas and in fact of course economically i will uh, if, if you said it i will even set up a blockchain technology to set up a new cryptocurrency so you know it's not this is not controlled by anybody, but it's decentralized and they can literally bypass the American banks and, you know, support the whole economical um, regress in Afghanistan by doing that. Actually, it can be possible. So these are the first three things, of course, I would focus on, which is coming to my mind right away. Uh, and, and of, of, uh, you know, other thing that if I can invite the ulama of different countries, not necessarily speaking about the issues, but to come and visit, get their advice. This will also create uh, understanding amongst the other Muslims that Afghanistan is safe. My Sheikh went there, he has visited. Not only ulama, I will invite YouTubers, I will in invite tourism to come and open it. And that's how we will build uh, economy. Uh, I'm sure people are very much curious to see Afghanistan. Uh, and if they can open the Muslim tourism and set up those industries, 
uh, of course, uh, other infrastructure as well, I think it will help Afghanistan in a very shortest time. They don't need to spend anything. They just need to say, okay, you're welcome, come. And people will come and bring in their money. Uh, in fact, 22 million people are visiting Malaysia every year. And their GDP is based on tourism. And we can do the same thing until we set up other uh, resources for ourselves. So this is the first thing I will do. Um, I hope, you know, they make sense. Okay, uh, brother. So, uh, uh, can you hear me? Because yes. we have to. Okay, so did you hear? We have five minutes here. We uh, Did you hear the question I had asked? I mean... No, uh, no. Know, repeat the question, okay, please. Let me repeat the question here. The issue is, look, I, I'm... Uh, Brother uh, Rahmatullah was saying that, look, uh, the Taliban themselves also will not just hand over power to someone. Uh, they, you know, it has, it's the issue of trust. There is, a, you know, the, but what my question to you is, is that do you even, you know, do you think that they understood what it means to be in power? Uh, I mean, as far as what it entails to be in power. Honestly, uh, until now, since uh, August 31st, until now, no. The answer is no. I don't think they understand what does it mean to be in power and leading a state. I think uh, they understand uh, how to remain in, in power, how to take power, but to uh, build a state, until now, I have not personally, I have not seen uh, signs of that. Uh, and uh, I am seeing the opposite. Uh, I am seeing that they continue to run after the international community. Uh, for them, it's vital the recognition of the same community that had deprived Afghanistan from uh, improvement, from independence for the last 30 years. Uh, they continue to uh, open very uh, strong channels with, with countries that have collaborated with the occupiers like the United States and the previously Russia. Uh, that tells me uh, these brothers uh, still don't get it. Uh, they they don't get what does it mean to be in power, to be in political leadership. You are in leadership for uh, uh, not only for a country, but you are leadership that the whole Ummah is concerned about, which is the rise of Islam again. Uh, and that is not a, a, a regional issue. It's not a local issue, although it starts locally starts in Afghanistan, but it is something that concerns the entire Ummah. You need the power of the Ummah to support you. Uh, and this is not how to gain the support of the Ummah. They have not yet uh, come forward with any plan that is visible that they are uh, looking for the Ummah as an Ummah. Not yet. They rely on uh, brothers who are on the ground that try to get some charity from here and there, but you cannot run a country on charity. You cannot run a country on money coming from outside. You can you can suffer. You, you have been suffering. You continue to suffer for a few more years. But within these four or five years, start building your infrastructure. Uh, let uh, me ask you something. Look, uh, uh, the Chinese, uh, when the Chinese came in power, uh, the Communist Party came in power, uh, it, you know, it was known as the, as the, as the OPM nation. Uh, but it had a political, it had an ideological view, very clear view of what it wanted to do in the world. Uh, yeah. You, you, you were talking about Russia when the Russia, yes. comes, you know, communist Russia came into power, and uh, with nothing, they, they, it took them within 10, 20 years. They were also uh, in in the world game, if not uh, one of the powers in the world. Ideologically, uh, that ideological understanding, uh, obviously, it's not it's not there. Isn't that clear? Yeah, it's not there. Okay. It's not there. So and, it's, and, it's not and, and, and the point is, the point is, is we, when we talked to, uh, wanted to talk to the brothers in Afghanistan, uh, we told them, look, uh, we are not coming to take power. If you need us, we can, uh, we will be, we will be there. We know what, what to do. But you, this is what you should be doing. And we can help. And we are all at your disposal. Disposal, we can help. We know we we have thought it all over uh, we don't have power you have the power now please do whatever it takes to build afghanistan as quickly as possible and we will help it's it's not that we, we are not uh, an uh, 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 an organization that's attached or tied to anyone else uh, you don't need to verify our trust today 
we have been there we have been in afghanistan and pakistan you know us the world know us the islamic the whole muslim uh, ummah they know who we are it's not we are not born yesterday we are not just creeping in to utilize a situation today uh, so that's it should be beyond that discussion even and i'm talking about hizb tahrir here I'm talking mm-hmm. specifically, Hizb tahrir is not coming to say, leave the power and give it to us. But that's an option. If you cannot do it, we will do it. We can. And it doesn't matter whether uh, uh, this is an organization that was created somewhere in Al-Quds, but today it's global. But that's not the issue. The issue is a, a Khilafah state, an Islamic state, is a must. Mm. Is a must. That's not something we can play with. But that state must be born as a giant you cannot born you cannot be born as a, a, a bigger you okay hold on. Hold, on, hold, on, hold on hold on hold on so you are saying uh, two questions that's it and we'll end it here but uh, but and we have to continue because it's not enough we, we because uh, the way it is so you're saying you, you're not saying to taliban uh, taliban come now and declare khilafah what you are saying is use the time that you you have to build your base Sure. And uh, and you have movements uh, who are willing to help you build that base. Is that what yes. you're saying? Or are you saying, uh, no, you must uh, declare this and that no, until no, no. we come there? Look, what we are saying, now you are in power, have an agenda, clear agenda, that mm-hmm. takes you there. Mm-hmm. That takes you where, where you should be. And that agenda, we do recognize and understand that now you are coming to a place, to a country which is absolutely devastated. Now you implement the laws which are which can govern the country in the most uh, uh, fair and Islamic manner. However, you must have the agenda to become the full fled, full-fledged uh, uh, state that can be the state of all the Muslims. Move there. We need you need to show an agenda. Don't be trapped. Today they are every move today, and I, I can stand behind my word, every move Taliban is doing today is making the rope go one more round on their neck yeah it's that's their, it's, it's that's the, that's the, the, that's a problem that's really serious problem we say look wait a second think about every move don't trap yourself more the international community as the brother was saying they're making big fuss about uh, 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 oh, gays and lesbians that, yeah. mm-hmm. and and about women, about etc. Forget about all this. I'm not going even to debate this or listen to it or even answer questions on these issues. I will focus on building my state with an agenda, very clear agenda that takes me there in less than five or six or seven years. China did it. Uh, Soviet Union did it in the past. Rwanda did it. Rwanda, which is devastated, was devastated by wars, did it. Iran partially not completely partially mm-hmm. did it although iran is is being falling in the trap day after day with all of these negotiations in geneva because these negotiations taking place forever definitely not for a nuclear uh, uh, accelerator they are talking about the entire issue of really? iran yeah. and its involvement in the world so yeah. be careful guys brothers be yeah. careful this is the world that does not mean that does not that, that that's not that's very mean against Islam, not against Islam as a prayer or as masjids. Look, I, I always use this example. Uh, uh, forgive my me for extending a little bit of my time. When the British came into Baghdad, when they uh, occupied Baghdad beginning of the uh, uh, last century after the First World War, the army, when he stepped his foot in Baghdad, he heard the Adhan for right. the first time somewhere. And he asked the question, his soldiers, what's going on? Somebody is calling something in Arabic, which I don't understand. They said he's calling for Adhan. What's Adhan? Calling for Salah. Does this have to do anything with my with my existence here? They said, no. He's just calling the people to pray. Nothing more. There's nothing dangerous. He said, well, poor guy. Give him loud speaker so he doesn't lose his voice. <laughs> so today they are willing to build us millions of masajid and give us millions of uh, uh, Adhan places or digitization of our adhan they can do that but that's not that's not the issue the issue is they are worried if you really know what you are doing you are building a strong state with foundation and then later on they will be more worried about your economic growth 
your intellectual growth, your education base, they will. That is what what they will be worried about. That's what they, <laughs> what they don't want you to do. And today, today, the problem, Taliban has not shown that they really know what they are doing with this. Uh, Brother Rahmatullah here on uh, uh, where are the Afghanistan? Where is the Afghanistan's economy you know, uh, or the experts? And he says, where are the experts who are sharing their thoughts on Afghanistan? Have you, uh, uh, Brother Rahmatullah, being uh, from there, being on the ground uh, or in and out of the ground, are you seeing uh, where the experts are coming together, those who care for the Ummah coming together, at least um, sitting together, maybe drinking a cup of coffee and saying, okay, here is an, uh, uh, an opportunity and how do we capitalize on this opportunity? Is this happening amongst the Afghani community, amongst the, and, and the experts? And, and if there are, then who are the experts? In, in which area, it should be clarified, in which area, experts in, uh, in science, technology, in different areas. But I, I mean, would that's say- Experts in, in for, you know, for instance, yeah. now, uh, you, are, you are obviously in education. Uh, most of us here are in education and, uh, people who have worked in different fields, people who understand politics, people who understand uh, how the the games are played in the world today. I mean, we are discussing literally. This is what we are doing. Except I'm missing a cup of tea here. The the the, the is this happening amongst the the Afghan? Uh, you know, yes. uh, that are there in Germany, that are there in. Do you see that? Is that something that? Yes, yes, it, it is happening uh, inside Afghanistan or outside Afghanistan. Um, and actually in a large numbers, uh, relatively large numbers, because people do understand it. For example, those who are intelligent, they understand, even if they don't agree with Taliban 100%, they understand this is not uh, a solution for us not to agree. Yes, we can hold our differences, but let's come together and support uh, the people, because Taliban in general are 70,000 in, uh, in the most, in the, if I be very generous in numbers, but the Afghan community is 40 million. So how can you compare 40 million, 70,000 and punish the entire population? So in general, people who agree with them, they, of course, they are wholeheartedly there. They don't even take any pay. They're working day and night. And people, who, even if they don't agree with them 100%, they're also working because they understand that the work is needed. Uh, we can talk about our differences later, but let's uh, help the community first. Okay, uh, Abu Talha, a question for you here. Do you think yes. when, Americans, uh, uh, when America left uh, in Afghanistan, did they make sure that they have to leave uh, the country in, in this dependent, uh, in a situation where it's in debt and dependent on World Bank or the IMF? Well, of course. Of course, uh, this is not new. All colonialism had done the same uh, during the old colonialism, British, French. Whenever they, they, they left, they destroyed every infrastructure behind them. Today, we see the Zionist state in, in Palestine, whenever they leave a city after negotiations for something they, uh, like when they did with Sinai, they destroyed each and every piece of infrastructure that was there, literally. So uh, America will not leave Afghanistan, will not, actually they said we did not go in a mission to build Afghanistan. Yes. yes. And I would that. add to it, they, meant in, they went into a mission to destroy it, yes. to make it to leave it absolutely on the, uh, to level it with the ground. And when I look at some of the videos that come from Afghanistan, I almost cry for those streets that were, that inside Kabul, that, that are not really streets. I uh, Sometimes you will be ashamed to have this street in my village, uh, here in, in the northern part of Jordan. I will be absolutely ashamed to see this street. That's what they have done in Kabul, which is the, 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 the capital. So they, they meant to leave it this. They meant to leave it absolutely with no agriculture. They meant to leave it with uh, no uh, no industrialization whatsoever. In fact, the minerals which are there, which America should have uh, probably digged for minerals, they did not even do that, not because they don't need the minerals, but because they were afraid that at some point this will fall in the hands of a government that we don't trust. So now... If the government that's now there is going to collaborate with them, or you will see now they will be digging some, the, the mine, mining some of these minerals for the benefit of American companies, like the uh, Unicol for the, the Tapi pipeline, etc. So America and Europe, these are capitalist countries. 
these are imperialists. These are absolutely with very uh, 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 strong opinion against the rise and the flourishing of other nations until and unless it's totally in their hands. So we have to understand that. Taliban must understand that. And that's why I keep saying, look, don't trust the international community. Don't trust the Muslim states which belong to the international community. You, you want to keep relations so that you leave it in peace so that no one is at, will attack you? Good. That's fine. Be smart. But don't rely on this community to give you one single penny. This single penny is going to be tied with lots and lots and lots of ropes. We, we, we know what the IMF does. We know the World Bank. In fact, there are reports coming from inside the World Bank which says that no place the World Bank had entered and was left with slightest development. They have devastated each and every place where they go in. You go into a place, it becomes absolutely poor. And you destroy their finances. You destroy their currency. The brother Rahmatullah was saying, look, go into cryptocurrency. Go into, uh, 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 into some type of digital currencies that you don't want to. In fact, don't use the current chains or blockchains that exist today. You have to create your own. You don't know how to create your own. Talk to us. Put it and open. As I said, look, open channels. Time is passing. Time right. is passing. Build some committees. You don't have to be millions. 70,000 more than enough. You need four or five uh, committees here, committee there to, to do that. Uh, Malaysia, the brother, you, you mentioned about the, the, uh, the millions of the, the tourists. What Malaysia did, there was I was in the U.S. Uh, a while a while ago in California working for some company. There was a delegation that kept coming time and after after time from Malaysia to have to hold meetings with intellectual people, scientific people, technological people from Malaysia or other places. Say we need this number of people in the following field. Please find them us. And I was one of the people who who helped finding some core people to go to Malaysia to to do something that's that's something that we can see today I'm not expecting Taliban to really know all of that but at least at least listen listen maybe maybe we have something that we can help we are not uh, we don't want to come and be part of a power that's that that doesn't have power in reality uh, that's it, it, it's true. We and if uh, if I say I'm, uh, uh, we can help, we can support, uh, and I'm not talking about me my myself per se uh, alone. I know there are tens of thousands, tens of thousands of very intellectual, very strong, strongly based Muslims worldwide who are willing, who are willing, and they can. And they will do it for nothing, absolutely nothing, not even eating. They will bring their food with them. But to know, to know that we are building an Islamic entity. I don't want to go and build a nation Islamic entity. No way. I'm not going to do that. So here, I, will uh, not, I, I, I will build an Ummah Islamic state. Because uh, it here, becomes here. mine. It becomes mine. I have to belong. I got Muslims you. Uh, yeah. So, Alhamdulillah. Okay, we have a final. Any final final thoughts from you, Brother Rahmatullah? I mean, uh, Abu Talha, Dr. Abu Talha is is he's giving his 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 heart out, uh, saying for those who are listening uh, uh, and those who can who are who are in a position of uh, not only just listening but also uh, implementing. So, this is a message from uh, Dr. Abu Talha. Uh, what is, the final thoughts from you, uh, Brother Rahmatullah, being from there, uh, seeing. Uh, the pleas being given by uh, the, you know an intellectual like Abu Talha and um, as he said and you know uh, Mufti Nadim and others. What what final thoughts do you have? Uh, you know, obviously this is not going to be the end of this conversation. Uh, there'll be many more conversations. But what in 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 in, in thirty seconds? Uh, what I would say is that the the new government in Afghanistan need time to sort a lot of things out. What people are facing right now, the issue is a financial, economical, 
And if we can all focus on this right now for at least for a few months, and at least the winter, which is a very harsh and cool, if people can support the families on the ground, and inshallah, uh, again, we will have an, another discussion to, to talk about other issues. But I think the core focus, let's have it on humanitarian causes. That would be best. So at least we can save the ordinary people, inshallah. Inshallah, Zakallah khair for uh, for your time. Allah, uh, you know, uh, brothers and sisters, these are the type of conversations that we need to have. Uh, these are the conversations that actually uh, make the difference. These are the conversations that uh, the whole ummah needs to uh, realize that uh, it needs to have, uh, because as you can see, uh, you never know when Allah Subhanahu wa Taala puts you in a position uh, where you. Uh, everything you know every moment every day every second counts uh, we have to be prepared uh, our ulama have to be prepared uh, we have to be there intellectually we need to know our deen we need to know the political system the economic system the social system we uh, have to prepare our minds to be able to uh, stand up to such uh, 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 challenges of our time uh, it would be it would be a shame uh, to have such an opportunity uh, today uh, right in front of us and we lose that opportunity because we didn't have the intellectual capacity to realize what we need to do as an ummah. So, uh, you know, I think these are, these are the type of conversations that make us uh, or give us the awareness that we really need uh, in order to... Uh, build that agenda that Abu Talha was talking about and to be in position to help uh, like uh, Brother Rahmatullah uh, was saying, inshallah. So here we will end it in Allah Ta'ala. Wallah, Jazakumullah uh, khairan for attending. Uh, we, next week's uh, next week Friday we have uh, Sheikh Uthman directly from Mali and we are discussing uh, colonization of Africa uh, and what actually took place in Mali. Uh, it will be another great conversation for someone who is on the ground in Mali. Uh, uh, in many ways, a conversation, a continuous conversation on colonization, uh, but just from a whole completely a different perspective. Uh, once again, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. سبحان منزله بليلة قدره درب الهداية واضحات تبياني يتلوه أحمد الدنا وهي التي عطشت لقطره هداية هتاني سبحان منزله بليلة قدره درب الهداية واضحات تبياني يتلوه أحمد للدنا وهي التي عطشت لقطر هداية هتاني ربت به وزنت بنفس زروعه حسنا وآتت أكلها بتداني لو كان أنزل فوق ضود شامخ لرأيته متصدع الأركان